so let's just start with uh so hi everyone uh so today we are going to see what is liquid neural network so <clears throat> let's uh, start with the introduction so as you know that like uh, when uh, you train the any model uh, any deep learning model or any machine learning model on some specific distribution of the data set so it will not work well when we test them on some uh, like if you change the distribution of the data set or something like that right so uh, this is the challenge that is faced in a uh, task of autonomous driving or network trapping management even in uh, autonomous drone navigation and in medical field so like uh, if you are trained if you have trained a model on the road of europe so naturally it will not perform well when it, it you will test them on the uh some road of india right because the network is uh uh network is get trained like network being trained on the uh, train on per, uh, perform bail on the road of europe right so <clears throat> similarly in the autonomous drone navigation like the if you uh, look into the case of autonomous drone navigation then like their environment get uh, environment keep changing and they need a neural network that can adapt themselves with the changing environment and uh, like it uh, so this this are some of the drawback of our current uh, neural network that we have so uh, for that like uh, in uh, 2020 a bunch of uh, scientists from mit they published a paper uh, which is titled as a liquid liquid time constant net, uh, network so where they give a idea about like uh, how they can uh, give a idea of a network which can adapt themselves in a different scenario so their idea was basically inspired from the brain science and uh, they have looked into the fundamental computation of uh, the brain of a macroscopic or- organism that is c elegant so that organism has only 302 neurons in their nervous system and uh, eight they are able to not only generate some complex dynamic dynamic but also could able to like uh, adapt themselves with the changing environment so these are something that they have in mind like com- if you compare with our neural network then we have like something called uh, a large uh, uh, even with the some large uh, large uh, neurons or something in our uh, neural network we could not able to like produce something like which could able to uh, adapt themselves with the environment but uh, uh, similarly in the brain <clears throat> if you look at the brain of the macro uh, macro even in the brain of the macroscopic organism then with uh, like very limited number of neurons they could able to generate very complex networks so there may be some fundamentally uh, fundamental reason behind this computation that is what they try to try to look into so <clears throat> if you look into the like uh, difference or the gap that uh, that that is there between the brain science and the machine learning so the first gap is that uh, they have uh, that in the representational learning capacity like uh, if you look at the brain then they are very good in organizing their world around it and uh, they also like know how to make sense of the environment and uh, they have ability to control their mind to achieve some tasks and this is what we wanted in our learning system right so we wanted some a learning system that that has some ability to achieve their goal or achieve their tasks uh, even with uh, like uh, changing environment and they can uh, they have a ability to control their mechanism right then we wanted uh, like our uh, uh, like if you look into the brain then our brain is very good in interacting uh, with the world and uh, to capture the casually uh, casual inference of the uh, casual actually casuality So, so like if you look into the uh, look into it like if something is happening in this way or uh, if you are take you have taken this this reason then your brain has a very logical reason of you know explaining their your reason right that okay like uh, this is this is the reason that i you have uh, like chose to drive in this way or that way and this is where our <clears throat> our learning system or something like neural network is lacking because uh, they are uh, just like a black box and they can't they have major majorly lacking in the like uh, uh, explaining their decision right so this is this is the one of the uh, gap that has between the brain science and machine learning other than that like uh, due to uh, brain has the ability to control the world so it is much, much more robust and the flexible so uh, this is the one of the uh, major gap 
gap between brain science and machine learning and this is like if uh, this is like something that we wanted to achieve like this is what uh, we wanted our learning system to achieve and uh, <clears throat> then uh, like for uh, making some learning system based on the brain so uh, <clears throat> is understanding it by going a little bit uh, uh, like for understanding the brain you need to understand the nervous system right and uh, for understanding nervous system you need to uh, deep dive into the neural circuit so uh, <clears throat> basically on higher level neural circuit is something that uh, get a sensory input and uh, generate some sensory output so it's nothing basically you give some sensation to network and uh, based on that sensation it gives some output so <clears throat> this is what we need to under uh, like uh, uh, we need to on going deeper and understand that how like this uh, uh they are producing that uh, that output so for that we need to look at the individual neurons how individual neurons and synapses uh, synapses communicate with each other uh mathematically so basically uh from the neural science we need to uh derive a mathematical model which could be abstract enough so that we can perform some computation on it at the same time it need to contain in a detail about how mind, mind work so basically like uh, you need a model or you need a mathematical equation that could like contain in a detail about that how the mind of the neuro uh, any macro or uh, macroscopic organism is working <clears throat> at the same time it need to be abstract enough so that we can compute some uh, compute something or some computation on it right so this is what we need from the uh, neural science so so basically uh, for that like uh, for driving that mathematical equations they are uh, going back to the previous bug that that is being done so the mark and pogio in 1976 already set up an approach to drive a mathematical model of uh, uh, neural circuit in a paper titled from understanding computation to understanding neural circuit so in 1976 like mark and pogio already have like uh, uh, taken this task and like uh, done something uh, done some work related to this and from uh, in this paper like they have <coughs> set up a framework to basically come up with a mathematical equation uh, which is related to the brain like the computation of the macroscopic brain so uh, from from that uh, like that with that paper we have uh, come up with an equation mathematical equation which looks something like this so if you look at this equation and uh, so dx upon my dt is basically the how the like dynamics of the system is changing with time <clears throat> so xt is the basically a state of the system and uh, st is uh, if you look uh, like i will uh, we will uh, spend some more time on st and st is basically here is the sum of the input data sense like your uh, uh, synapses is getting so this is basically a stage and uh, like talking mathematically then uh, <clears throat> like uh, the ap in this equation is basically any activation function it could be a sigmoid or a tanis kind of function and uh, a is basically basically a matrix and this matrix is coming from the input that all synapses is getting and uh, so from these two equations we could drive a mathematical uh, form for like uh, dx upon my dt like it's basically a uh, we can drive the dynamics of the system in that way right so this is one of the framework that is set up by mar and pogo and this is this is from this is basically inspired from it <clears throat> so let's understand like why uh, why this formulation is useful or like why uh, why this is the this is the formulation is something uh, that we have come up with so this this formulation is more like uh, very much loosely related to the computational model of neural dynamics that is the first point and uh, very st here is like the they capture some of the all uh, synaptic unit uh, to the cell like all the uh, synap input to the synapses that they are getting from the pre synaptic source <clears throat> and this equation has a more as a stable state and a stable time constant this is one of the uh, region also uh, we are considering these equations and uh, uh later we will show that this equation are inversion of uh, approximator so that means that this equation has ability to like approximate any type of dynamics that a system system can take so like uh, uh 
it has a capability to like capture any complex dynamics or any complex function like this this can approximate any any functions so this is the major reason that uh, that this uh, we are dealing with, uh, we have this a specific formula uh, formulation now coming to why this equation how how is this equation related to our neural network like let's say so what we have done till now let me summarize this thing for you so we have uh, like uh, we have looked into the brain of the macroscopic organism and come up and uh, come up with something that okay like there is some uh, our brain is very good at adapting with the environment and we then we started looking into mathematical model of the brain computation and the from brain computation we already looked into one paper where they have set up a framework to come up with that equation and uh, then we came up with this equation and uh, and uh, uh, and we talked about some equation like we come up with this equation right so let's look at this equation and like let's now understand that how this is related to the neural network okay we have the equation but what uh, what now how is this related with neural network so uh, so for now you just have to take this as a information that uh, this equation is a class of ctrnn uh, which is basically continuous time recurrent neural network mm -hmm. so uh, basically uh, ctrnn is a version of neural od uh, so we will talk uh, we will talk about neural od and uh, ctrnn in uh, in bit detail uh, in next slide but uh, the most important point here is to understand that like for now let's take this as a as a information or uh, like i know that we have not, we have went establish this information in it but let's take this as a information that okay this this equation is some form of a neural od something called neural od so that neural od uh, uh so that means that this equation provide a common ground between the neural network and the brain science so this is what the main jeev of this uh, this thing like okay <clears throat> so now we have established a common ground between neural network and the brain science so uh, from with this equation we are basically we have already connected these two these two uh, branches to uh, together so this is the main zero of this uh, this this equation <clears throat> so after that let's talk about uh, neural od and ctrnn in a bit detail and uh, you know learn about that what is this, uh, what is this thing that uh, Uh, we have already looked. Uh, we have already uh, given you information that okay, this is the class of neural OD. So let's look into the neural OD and CTRN in much detail. <clears throat> so uh, for this part, you can refer to the paper titled "Neural OD Differential Equation." So for more detail on it, we will talk. Uh, we will talk about this in a uh, very briefly. And uh, <clears throat> so basically, this paper received best paper award in. Uh, neuro ips to uh, 20 uh, 2018 and this is one of the like uh, you can say that one of the uh, most uh, one of the good conferences and uh, they have received the best paper award so for understanding the neural od uh, what you need to do is just let's go back to the residual neural network like which is proposed by macrosoft to avoid the problem of vanishing gradient so macrosoft has proposed a like uh, uh, like a new network which is called as residual network neural network where uh, like they have uh, they have shown that for for like when we have a deep network very big network and uh, so uh, in a big network we, we have to face the problem of a vanishing gradient so what they have done is that instead of just taking the previous state into account like they have also taken the like uh, <clears throat> the function of some last state right so that they to carry the uh, bit and basis of this uh, so so this is basically the uh, equation of the hidden state of uh, uh, residual network and uh, if you look into the neural od so this is the like equation of the neural od so this uh, in um, my left hand side uh, comp uh, like my left hand uh, <coughs> we have a residual network equation and in the right hand we have a neural od equation so now let's compare both thing and see that how they are relatable so from let let's absorb from the residual networks and uh, if you are uh, if you are uh, uh, like uh, you can write the residual network in this form right uh, we have just uh, taken ht in this side and uh, uh, subtracted by it and we have just divided if you look and the denominator then it's just one so we can write the equation in this form right so now make the time continuous <clears throat> i mean like make the time uh, as much as uh, a smaller possible so uh, then our uh, denominator will converge to the dt very small time and uh, our uh, uh, denominator will converge to the dh so 
now we are interested in looking into what is the what will happen if we change the time a little bit right? i mean uh, we will only taking the account to very uh, a smaller time into the uh, account so in that way uh, we we get into this equation and if you look closely then this is the same equation of a neural loading this is the equation of a neural loading so <clears throat> basically what we came uh, what we concluded from this thing is that like the neural od is nothing just a form of a distributed network where instead of having a continue a discrete layer like uh, if you look into the distributed network then they have their very many discrete layer <clears throat> so in neural od basically instead of having many discrete layer they just have like a continuous layer this is the this is what uh, uh, this is what uh, uh, this is what is the conclusion of this this thing so basically uh, neural load is nothing but just uh, just a continuous uh, you know uh, like uh, making the network continuous and uh, uh, yeah rather than having a discrete <clears throat> and uh, so yeah so this this equation is just not uh, stable so uh, the more stable version of the neural od is the uh, city rna uh, uh, which is given by this equation so <clears throat> so this is defined like this is the same equation just we have added one term uh, so sorry here it instead of x it could have been uh, it could be hd so in this equation hd minus my tau hd upon my tau is the like uh, additional additionally we have added to assess the system to reach the equilibrium must be some time constant so just to make our equi uh, our equi uh, learning system uh, stable this is what we have done so now uh, now what is that like we have we derived the equation for city rna and we know that city rna is nothing just a version of neural od and neural od is just nothing but a distributed network making the layer uh, layer continuous so how is this related with <coughs> our own equations like that we have derived from the brain science so uh, yeah let's compare the equation our equation with the city rna equations that we have already derived from the brain science and uh, instead of having that fixed time constant <clears throat> so let's let's look into the equation let's compare that both both equation this is our equation and this is uh, uh, let's say this is the equation that we have derived from the brain science so if you will compare these two equations uh, so the only difference is in the term of tau so <clears throat> basically instead of having a fixed tau here uh, in the the city rn the tau is constant we have it tau which is dependent on the function itself so their uh, their tau is uh, serve as a time dependent varying time uh, input in dependent varying time system so it means basically that uh, even even tau is not constant here but we are like at each a state uh, uh, we we are providing them with a, they are dependent upon the input and the time uh, uh, and that function right so this this is the equation of a liquid time constant and this is the only thing that is different from the city rna and this is the most uh, this is this is uh, the like uh, uh, main feel of the paper like they have not done anything uh, extra but but just they have the different tau in their paper and they are and now the paper is same as the uh, as the like uh, city rna paper <clears throat> so coming to this point like let's conclude it and uh, like what we have learned is that uh, uh, we derive a mathematical equation from uh, with the help of brain science because like brain science is something that could able to uh, make a you know <clears throat> brain science is something that is uh, 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 like our brain is very fun, uh, it's meant to fundamentally uh, uh, have generate some complex dynamic so we have we are we have taken inspiration from the brain science and generated some mathematical model and then with that mathematical model we have compared this with uh, like uh, current uh, uh, like how this mathematical model with related to the uh, neural network and then we have we have came to conclusion that this is just another class of uh, uh, city rna so it's it's just a city rna with a different version where the tau is not fixed so this is what uh, what is the main uh, crux of the paper so <clears throat> now let's go to the training this neural network so as this is a class of a neural od or uh, neural ordinary differential equation so 
training this network is similar to training a uh, like uh, neural loading so uh, while training we have to do the forward pass and the backward pass right so in the forward pass uh, just uh, so for uh, for the for doing the forward pass uh, we forward pass of neural loading usually done using od solver so basically you od solver uh, what od solver it does is that od solver give you the uh, like uh, give you the a state of the system at each point of time like uh, the state of this a state of the system at any particular point of time can be computed using od solver so this is the main job of the od solver and the od uh, basically od solver simulate the simulate the trajectory so like system is starting from a trajectory and then it go to the uh, uh, and it will uh, go to that some some point a uh, x t uh, from where you want it uh, your uh, uh, from which uh, time like for which particular time period you want your state of the system <clears throat> so that can they can gen, they can give you that uh, a state of the system at any particular time why actually like why uh, simulating the system so how they do that like uh, they basically break down the continuous uh, uh, like uh, continuous simulation interval uh, into the some continuous part 0 to t not and at the it uh, and rather than like taking a continuous thing at the each a step they are updating the neural state so basically uh, at each a step they are up, uh, updating the path or trajectory of the system so this is what they have done and uh, from that they uh, they basically <clears throat> compute the uh, you know uh, like uh, okay so let me uh, explain this more properly so like uh, see uh, i don't know if i could able to draw the hair but yeah i will try uh, okay this this i will draw okay so uh, <clears throat> what i'm trying to say is that let's say this is the trajectory and we wanted to have the uh, state of the system at this particular point t and so what neural od is that is uh, od solver does is that at a given point of time let's say this they, they divided to discrete time so one time two time and uh, three time so number of discrete time four time fifth time and they learn like by doing this like uh, let's say they have connected this they have connected this they have connected this and they have connected this and from that connection they they are uh, basically uh, drawing a path and uh, at uh, <clears throat> at a given state uh, if you want to if you want the state of this at this point so from these are all the uh, discrete time input that they have taken they will uh, give you the value at this particular time so <clears throat> this is what uh, they are doing uh, this is what uh, actually od solver does so basically you can uh, 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 yeah you can uh, uh, calculate the state of any uh, state of the system at any particular time uh, using the od solver so <clears throat> basically uh, in this paper they have introduced a new od solver like usually be there are a lot of uh, od solver called euler method and some uh, euler method and uh, ranga tunga rang tunga something something like that so in this paper they have uh, introduced a new od solver which is basically uh, that they fuse the implicit and ex explicit euler method and call the fuse solver so <clears throat> so uh, like this is very, uh, like if you want to more detail about uh, about it like it's a it's a good thing to look into the od solver what is od solver does so you will get a more idea about it but yeah, yeah. uh just for the sake of time like uh, i'm uh, they have uh, i'm skipping this part and i'm just telling you like uh, this is what od solver does on a higher level and in this paper they have uh, uh, i'm sorry about that and i need to i think uh, <clears throat> erase this thing so uh yeah to or clear 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 all right yeah nice so yeah <clears throat> so uh yeah so basically in this paper they have introduced a new od solver that is called as a fuse solver where they fuse the two implicit and explicit property of the neural method so uh, let's talk about the forward pass and uh, uh so this is the forward pass algorithm basically yeah so let's look the algorithm in more detail bit detail and let's in, uh, let's invest some more time here and then meanwhile i am also taking the pain from here the same pain annotation so yeah 
uh, spotlight yeah maybe this will work or something maybe yeah okay 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 that's that's nice okay that's nice but uh, i wanted to have some you know, a drawing tool only so yeah let's take this drawing okay. yeah so basically these are the parameter uh this is the time constant basically and then weights and then recurrent weight and something like that and uh, first i have to define that what is the our audio solver like because uh, we have already uh, like seen that uh, they have defined a new audio solver for this paper right so uh, uh, for that like first let's do they have defined a function for the audio solver and how they are updating like, uh, like i have already to uh, uh, show you like the uh, what audio solver does is uh, is like uh, taking a Taking the next step by breaking down the system into discrete state, right? So xt plus one or something like that. So how they are updating that xt plus one? Let's say you are here and you want to calculate the time of this thing. So t plus one. So how they are calculating that? So for that, uh, for next uh, t plus one delta t, they are taking the previous state into account, xt into account, and then they are taking like uh, delta t into this function. So uh, this function is basically nothing. Just uh, uh, again, a, a activation function. It can be tan h or the sigma d, anything. And a here is a bias factor, and uh, they are doing the hard mod op product uh, with that. And uh, and uh, yeah. So and this is in, this is in the dominator, dominator. So this is how they are updating the next step. Like uh, if you uh, if you want to calculate the X three at this point in this uh, paper uh, in this uh, trajectory. So they are taking previous step and uh, updating like this. And after a complete pass, like they they are doing into this a number of us. Uh, so how much? Like this is a continuous trajectory, right? So they need to decide the how many number they uh, how in how many way they want to do the in how many step they want to do the forward pass. So in this paper, they have uh, done the forward pass in the L step. So this is basically the number of uh, a step that they have taken for do the uh, forward task. So they have started from t equal to zero, and then they have taken the L step to uh, to turn the complete pass. So this is basically the forward pass, and uh, <clears throat> so this is the one pass. I mean, after doing after completing for N step, after updating this for N step, this is the first pass. So just look into this formula, like how they they are they calculating. And uh, like uh, these are the just uh, uh, for i into a, they are just using this usual stepping function from it. So <clears throat> this is what they are doing. And uh, yeah, now let's move to backward propagation by <clears throat> using VPT. So <clears throat> we have done the forward pass. After doing the forward pass, we get the state of the equation at last, right? That is x t. So uh, while doing backward pass, we uh, we are using the same algorithm that we used to uh, that we used during RNN. So what they are doing is that we are just updating the bait. So for updating the bait, how they are updating the bait? Uh, uh, usually, like uh, there are uh, there are more way to do the backward pass for neural loading, and they they also have some something called edge joint sensitivity method. But they have also discussed that in this paper. Uh, but uh, Point is that they find the VPT to more stable, and that's why they have taken this thing. Uh, so I'm also only discussing VPT here, VPT uh, here, which is backward propagation through time. So after get generating some output, they are doing some uh, like updating the bait, right? So uh, update uh, they have to update the bait. So basically, bait updation is the same as like how you do in the RNN. They are uh, just doing the derivative of the uh their parameters and uh, this is how they have uh, they are doing the like after after you're having a forward pass you have you will get a loss function and then you compare the loss function uh up, you get a loss function and you get you do the backward propagation on it uh you do the gradient descent on the gradient update on the back uh, on the uh, i mean <coughs> the uh, parameters so this is what uh, doing the backward propagation by bptt so now we have trained the model. So like, let's come to that uh, 
how expressive our LTC is. So, <clears throat> so calculating expressivity for any neural network is still an open question. Like you have a network and how you calculate that how expressive your network your network is that is still an open question. So, early attempt on measuring expressivity of a neural network include the theoretical study based on the functional analysis. And a study showed that neural network with three layers, just only three layers, can approximate any finite set of continuous mapping with any precision. But that means is that just network with a three layer has a power to uh, approximate any any type of function. So it doesn't matter how complicated your mapping is or how, how complica complicated your function is, just with a three neural network with three layer, you can approximate any function that uh, that have shown by some uh, shown by math that I have mathematically solved by some studies. This is known as the inversal approximation theorem. <clears throat> you can uh, dig uh, dig more about it if you want. And uh, mathematically, we can show that our LTC are uh, inversal approximate uh, are inversal approximator. So uh, our neural network can approximate any functions. So for proof detail, you can go to the section, refer to the section five of this paper, like how you can, how we have shown that LTC had our inversal approximator. We are skipping the proof because that's not uh, uh, very much required here. So, <clears throat> so that's not only way of express, exp uh, expressivity. There are other uh, some uh, work uh, related to uh, uh, like uh, measuring expressivity. One way is that uh, a unifying expressivity measure of a static deep network. <coughs> that is like uh, a unifying experiment, a static deep network based is the trajectory length introduced in some paper. So you should read paper for more detail, but uh, just keeping you the account, like keeping you the uh, high level view of that paper is that. So that paper talk that like if you give in a given uh, in, for any neural network if you give in a tra uh, like tra any trajectory as an input let's say you are given a circle as an input so at each layer uh, <clears throat> you need to compute that how like uh, so basically at each layer uh, like how complex your trajectory is getting or uh, how the length of the like arc length of the trajectory is uh, increasing so this is this is the one of the major of the trajectory uh, one of the major of uh, expressivity, like uh, if the, your uh, trajectory is getting more complex in output at each every layer, if your trajectory is getting complex, complex, and complex, so that means your uh, network is very more uh, like uh, very good, uh, has a very good expressive power. <clears throat> and uh, this is what uh, we have shown in this paper also that uh, our uh, ne liquid neural network is very expressive in that way and. Uh, uh, they they are able to generate very complex trajectory even with uh, like a starting with a circuit. So like <clears throat> calculating expressivity um, theoretically is a one thing. Let's uh, let's like uh, till you could not able to see experimentally, then uh, there is no point of talking theoretical, right? So uh, let's see that uh, what is the experimental result that that uh, this liquid ne neural network has shown recently. So <clears throat> so first is from the Tamsis prediction. Uh, uh, experiment so through this experiment if you look at the all the like uh, in, uh, benchmark data set like in the gesture or occupancy so in most of them our uh, ltc tasks are better than like uh, all the other network like lstm ctrn or ctgr or anything our lst is but are we performed better than them uh, <clears throat> but in the tasks where we they have the long-term dependency in that tasks lstm are uh, obviously better and uh, so they have for the second kind of experiment like first thing is in the time series prediction like they have already shown that okay time series prediction may you can use that thing like like i mean yeah this is the one of the go-to model if this can be one of your go-to model for your time series prediction i mean just if, if you don't have the longer term dependency ideally the longer term dependency is the in the nlp task so like it's better to avoid that because in art and even in the if you look into the financial data then most of them are following that okay your current process basically not depending much on the very you know like uh, like very uh, very much on the something that has happened 15 day before or something so there we can use use this thing but yeah for the nlp tax where we have a long term dependency like if you are uh, generating some uh, paragraph or something like that then you have to remember some particular but so for them like this uh, this is not going to work much better 
but yeah, for other than that all the all times is prediction tax they <coughs> they have they are very much uh, better than lstm second is uh, ex second experimental result is coming from half cheetah kinematic uh, modeling so where what they have done is that they have collected the 25 uh, pre trained controller from the jeep environment uh, 25 pre trained controller uh, of a cheetah half cheetah for for jeep uh, environment and the task is to just fit the object based on the space time series in auto regressive function and uh, <clears throat> so they have just fitted the like uh, a space observation a space time in in a auto regressive fashion and uh, the the test result basically root for the superiority of the performance of ltc so basically even in half cheetah kinematic dynamic, dynamic problem so this is this this is the like uh, like if the performance of this model is superior so this is basically this means that like your model can perform well if you have to capture some physical dynamics because like half cheetah kinematic is problem of capturing a physical dynamics so it can capture well physical dynamics so and if you look at the experimental region so yeah our <coughs> ltc uh, but uh, better than any other network so yeah that's that's the thing and other result there are also more uh, uh, work is going on in this and uh, recently uh, liquid neural network has shown green uh, so great result in autonomous drone navigation and uh, <clears throat> also in autonomous driving so uh, below are the video like if you want to look at this video then i could even like share this video in a uh, link uh, in uh, uh, in chat box so <clears throat> so basically uh, you can look at there like uh, like all the tasks of the like uh, this is currently in autonomous uh, driving tasks the liquid neural network is performing very well and it's very promising and lot of work is are still being uh, done on this neural uh, liquid neural network so like if you have a tasks in hand where you have uh, like uh, you like they very involvement is getting changed or something then then just because their uh, basic fundamental equation is derived from the uh, neural science so you can basically root for it that okay uh, this is the <clears throat> this is the thing that you can uh, work on and uh, so yeah these are some of the references that i used so thank you so much for being here and uh, yeah see you